Amen. But he knew your wings. Yes. He knew when you had your afro. <laughs> he knew. He knew. That was a long time. When <laughs> God even knew who you would become yes, before you even knew yourself. All right, God chose you. And God said in the logos, you are mine. That's what I love about God. Because every day, when the devil wants to get his little kneeling hands on me, God reminds him every day, he is mine. Get your hands off of my problem. Because I chose him in Christ before the world was ever framed. And God now has us on his team. I'm not a leftover. I am somebody in God's kingdom. There's no quid pro quo in hell. There's no favor for the favor. That's not how God works. In fact, we can't calculate the payment that God would have to make for our souls. It is priceless. His name is Jesus. But when you look at verse 4, which is a sermon all in itself, Paul is telling us that part of our spiritual blessing is that we were chosen in Christ before the foundation of the world. He said, don't you understand that God loved you before the world was ever established? He first loved you in the Logos in times eternal. He says God was for you before you were ever against yourself. God says, and I had a picture in mind for you. He didn't just choose me, yes. Marcelo says to choose me, but he chose me to be holy. Yes. God chose me to be just like himself. Yes. I am holy. Yes. Be ye holy. Yes. God is the standard for every person who knows Jesus Christ. Yes. And therefore we cry, what? Holy, holy to who? To the name of God. You read it for yourself. He said, I created you to be holy. That means God created you to be different. To be set apart. That you would be like Jesus. In Leviticus and in 1 Peter, we are told to be holy as God is holy. That's the style of life that we are supposed to live. A life that is separated. People are to know you by the life that you live. Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. And you don't become entangled with foolishness. Mm -hmm. right. Man has created all kinds of holidays mm -hmm. to entangle you in. Yes. My pastor used to tell me, he said, Brother Ellis, don't get caught up in holidays. Mm -hmm. He said, you wear a holiday like a loose coat. Mm -hmm. He said, don't ever button up your coat. Mm -hmm. Amen? Because mm -hmm. if you have to run, yeah. <laughs> if they get the coat, they got you. Mm -hmm. He said, but if you don't button it up, and you can wiggle out of it and they can have the coat. <laughs> what is he talking about? We have gotten so tangled up in this season, the season has us. And then we confuse ourselves trying to mentally put Jesus in it. As we count down the number of shopping days to Christmas, which ain't in the book. Which ain't in the book. And people say, yeah, but God gave a gift this Christmas morning. Where you get that from? <laughs> God gave you a gift before the world was ever born. Yes. Right. God said, I'm going to you the 25th. But I know my will for your life in the logo. Yes, but that I would send a Savior. Yeah. And he would come to ransom you from being entangled in the foolishness of this world. Don't let it catch you. Because if it does... Then you'll be like the rich young ruler. You'll find you can't part yourself with it. You can't do it. So therefore, the holiday has you. You don't have the holiday. And you can put the word Jesus all you want, but that doesn't make you free. This is what God is trying to tell us. He said not only that, but God has made you pure through the blood of this Jesus. He's cleansed you and washed you of your sinfulness so that you can stand in the presence of God. Amen. Right now, as I am, I cannot stand in the presence of God. Come on. I would be destroyed. Paul tells us not only are we called to be holy, but we are called to be blameless. That means to live a life that is unblemished, 
without spot or defect, spiritually blank, blameless, unblemished from the marring effects of sin. This is what this season is about. It's not about Christmas shopping. It's about recognition of what God did for us. And John represents it as God loved you first. Paul said God loved you in Christ before the foundation of the world. He said, don't you get it? It's not admiring the baby in the manger. It's confessing the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That you might be found in him. And once we are found in him, then God sees us different. God no longer sees Clyde as Clyde has become. But God sent his son into the world to not to condemn the world. Yes. But in order that the world might be saved, and I put my words here, the world don't mean nothing to me. Mm -hmm. See, God sent his son not to condemn Clyde Ellis, mm -hmm. but that Clyde Ellis might be saved yes. through the God who would come into the world. Yes. He said, Clyde, if you confess your sins, then this God that you are admiring uh, in the manger, he is faithful and just to forgive you your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness so that you can now stand in the presence of God and declare that you are no longer in condemnation for you are in Christ Jesus. And so for our sake, God made Jesus Christ to be sin for me so that through him, I might become the righteousness of God. Amen. You see what God is trying to do for us? God isn't looking for me to decorate anything. Amen. God is looking for me to confess the Lord Jesus Christ, who he set in motion before the foundation of the world. He was already demonstrating that he was a God of love because he had already put his love in place before the foundation of the world. This Jesus would come and take my punishment. He was the one who would have no sin. But yet he would become sin for all of us so that we could stand in the presence of God, holy and without blame. Righteous in his eyes, all because we said yes, not to the baby, but to the Savior. Amen. And his name is Jesus. Right. So as we consider our lot in life, Sometimes we get depressed thinking that we are not worth much in this world. Then you need to stop and just take hold of what Paul is reminding us about how God sees us in Christ. And notice that it's Clyde, he used the verb, the, pro, the pronoun, in him. In him. Not out of him, not around him, but in Christ Jesus. We were chosen in him. What it tells me is that God has put us and Christ together in his plan. God planned to make you and me, who didn't exist, mm -hmm. his children through the redeeming work of the Christ. Amen. You see what God is saying about his love? You will become one with him, in him, before the Father who has chosen you. And God did this long before he ever created anything. But when I think about God in the flesh and what he came to do for me, I have concluded that I was not deserving of what God had done. Yet because God loves me and has plans for me, he chose me in him. This is what we call the doctrine of election. I'm not gonna execute that for you today. And this is not you going to the ballot box voting God in. This is God choosing you. And you are now called the elect. Huh? The called ones that he used in Romans 8. You are the called. It didn't say he called. You are the called. So God chose us. And so it all sounds complicated. But what God is trying to tell us this morning is that we are blessed. We are chosen because we are loved. We were chosen before the world was created. We are not condemned because he loved us before the foundation of the world. Jesus died for us, and God now considers us holy and blameless in him. Paul goes on to say it's in his love that he predestinated us to become his children. We are adopted into the 
the body of Jesus Christ according to the purpose of God's will. Yes. And yet, being adopted, God didn't give us a lesser inheritance. Right. We are joint heirs yes. in him, yes. with him, yes. so that everything that is Christ is mine. Yes. And all this was set in motion before the world was founded. Yes. God loved me yes. before yes. the foundation of the world. Yes. And he ordained that I would be one and a joint heir with the only begotten son, yes. provided I would be in him. Yes. And this is what God predestinated. God chose us before the creation of the world to be his children. Mm -hmm. We are now God's family. God wants you to be a part of his family. He has set you apart by choosing you. So we have been adopted as God's children. And Paul reminds us in Galatians chapter 4, verses 4 and 5, that when the fullness of time was come, I preached that on the first Sunday. This all happened, not on a December the 25th, but it happened in the fullness of time. It happened in God's appointed time that the Christ who had been slain before the foundation of the world, huh? that he would make his advent. He would be called the Emmanuel. Yeah. He would be the God that would dwell amongst us. He would be the Hosanna. Yeah. He would be the one that would save us from our sins. Now, he didn't come into this world wrapped up in no box with a bow on top of his head. But he came in lowly circumstances yeah. of God that is above everything. He's a king of kings and a lord of lords. That he came into this world humble. He went out of this world humiliated, but at the name of Jesus, God has exalted him and given him a name above every name. And he did this before the foundation of the world. God loved me before he made me. And God had put in place my salvation. And whosoever, being a sinner, he said, would confess the Lord Jesus Christ, would be saved. Yes. Huh? This morning I'm able to be here yes. huh? because of what God did on that cross. Yes. Huh? Yes. And I don't put that, I don't stuff him back in a manger every December 25th and yes. cry about a baby in a manger. I exalt a Savior who died on Calvary's cross, who went to the cross for my light of the world. He would be the one that we would see, not a baby in a manger. Huh? And so every day when I get up, I thank God for Jesus because of what he did before the world was born. You see what I'm saying? He did all of this. The Bible said he was the lamb slain. When was he slain? Before the foundation of the world. Huh? God did something for me before I ever cried out in this world. Huh? I thank God every day for Jesus. Huh? And so this time of the year, I am made free in God's love, which was set upon me, upon you. God loves you this much. And you can never out-love God. God loved you first before he ever created you. And that was knowing what you would become. And yet he loves me. And God died for me. For my sins. He died. He died. And every day it reminds me of how undeserving I am. It's all to Jesus that I owe. The songwriter said, Sin had left a crimson stain, but Jesus washed me white as snow. That's what we're here to do today, to celebrate what God did on the cross for your sins and for mine. And I bless God that I can now stand in the blameless, holy blood of the Lamb. I thank God every day for Jesus. I'm here to tell you that God commended his love toward us 
in that while we were sinless, Christ died for us. That's what the message is all about. A God who loves us. A God who loves us. Children aren't born in this world to be babies. They are born to be adult men and women that they might be fruitful and multiply, God say, to his honor and to his glory. I remind people every day that it's God's will that children grow up. Hmm? That's God's will. A child, a baby is nothing but a, a, a miniature adult. <laughs> you just have to keep fanning in the flame until it comes to full flame. Uh, you just keep fanning it. And one day, that which you used to fan, and they'll fan you. Huh? Isn't that how it works? God is so good. Way back. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So you see, it had nothing to do with princes. It had to do with us in him. And he came that we might be in him. And on that night, Jesus took the bread. 